good morning, everybody. Um, so it's nice to be here via Zoom, and I'm going to start sharing my screen. So hopefully you'll see it. We see it. All right. Um, most of you know what I, about what I'm going to say. So if, if, if that is the case, uh, I thank you for your indulgence, but I think it's a, a, good, uh, a good thing for us to know the, the, uh, the, the veterans and also certainly for those who are joining our, our ranks as uh, fresh fish. Um, so the point of this is trying to uh, provide some insight and some uh, advice, I guess, if you want to call it, in terms of uh, what's out there in order to buy. And obviously in this day and age, currently, very different from 10, 15 years ago when you had more vendors. Uh, and obviously we have fewer vendors given the um, shape of the hobby uh, these days. But anyway, I'm, I'm primarily going to talk about buying uh, uh, equipment for your infantry impression, although this could be applicable to one in artillery or in cavalry uh, in some measure. So uh, with having said that, so you see three buttons at the top, and uh, many of you probably know I'm very into the material culture of Civil War, and I, I'm very keen about detail and not to the point of being uber crazy, but I, I keep a, an eye out for what's good, what's right, et cetera. And so the three buttons, uh, one is original and there are two reproductions. And so the one on the left is a reproduction uh, uh, offered by Wambao. I think that's how you pronounce his name. This, the one in the middle is also a reproduction offered by a sutler. I'm not sure which one I picked. And the button on the right is the original. And, you know, it's a, it's a small detail, but, you know, when you're, when you're looking for a button or you want, you know, or other things, the, 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 you can see that the, the buttons on the outer, on the, on the far right, far left, the shield has these striations on the shield and that is right. Uh, also, very, very, uh, in, uh, very often when you look at the back of the button, it will say Waterbury. And in fact, the Waterbury Button Company is still using, as far as I know, originals um, dies in order to create some of these buttons. So if you're in a, in a settler area and you need a button or buttons for your new blouse, what have you, you know, it's these little details in my view that make the difference. And particularly when you're, t when you're in living history situations, I try to, you know, strive for accuracy, not to the point of craziness, but just if, if something's out there, I'm educated and I know what to look for and then I can buy it. I've also been asked by many people in our unit, gee, what, what should I buy for headgear or where can I buy leathers, et cetera. So, I'll get to that in a minute as far as uh, a, something all of you, particularly unit commanders, should consider. So the question, questions, the big picture, you know, is my unit interest authenticity? To what extent uh, do you do a lot of living history events? If that is the case, then obviously you want to make your impression as, as good as it can be because you are, when you talk to visitors, they believe you. They think you're, you're telling them the absolute truth. So either uh, 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 directly or indirectly, your impression is, is providing information to, to the visitors. Is there a resource person or committee who can guide me? That's extremely important, I think, in many units. Uh, oftentimes you're told, well, go, go to SNS or go to Regimental Quartermaster and pick up your gear there. Well, that could be perhaps a, 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 a problem. Uh, what is your commitment to the hobby? 
that's an answer you probably can't answer, but uh, I certainly, when I started, I was in it um, full bore, still am. Uh, how long? I've been with the 25th New Hampshire, I guess now, since for 20 years. And I actually started when I was a kid in, in high school. I worked, I was, again, as I said, I was working a gun, uh, uh, NSSA, and also uh, reenactments. Uh, the return on the investment, a lot of people say, well, I, gee, I really want an overcoat. They're so nice, they're so great, they're so cool. Well, how often are you gonna wear that overcoat? Is it more important to buy a, a really good, uh, blouse or a good musket or what have you versus buying uh, an overcoat that you may not wear but once or twice a year. And what, what, what do I do to become an educated uh, customer? That consumer, that's, that's very important. It depends on you. You know, you have to, to really want to try, if you're interested uh, and want to be part of a really good unit, uh, make an effort to try to uh, learn about the material culture of uh, the Civil War. And should I focus on early, mid, or late war equipment? I think it's a, that would be a good talk for Mike Krauss to give. Um, there are differences, and I, I'll talk about this a little bit later. Practicality and timing. When we, man, when many, many of us started out, you know, we ordered stuff from people like Sakala and CJ Daly and so on, and and you know like well what years are going to arrive i need it i need for an event you know coming up in the fall i'm ordering it in the spring uh these this is not like buying stuff off the shelf from walmart or what have you uh all, lot, some of this a lot of this stuff is custom is made um uh, by hand and takes time particularly if it's going to be correct so you have to think about uh but shoes, perfect example. Gee, I'm joining uh, the so-and-so unit in the spring and there's a, an event coming up in July. I need shoes. Well, if you're looking for handmade shoes, uh, you're looking at, you know, six to eight months or more. Other, uh, or you buy them off the shelf from Regimel, Quartermaster, what have you. But, uh, you know, it's important for you to make sure you allow enough time to acquire your equipment in, or, in order to have it, in, uh, first of all, to wear it and make sure it fits. The last thing you want to do is buy a new pair of shoes and then, the, and then the first time you wear them is in an event. That is a total mistake, as you all know. You probably have uh, had some experience with that. So education details. Um, I own Echoes of Glory, uh, the Union, uh, uh, copy union version. I, I think uh, Horse Soldier probably has a bunch of them for sale, or you can uh, Amazon. If nothing else in your library, you should own this book for reference. And I also happily own the compendium, both the both uh, an earlier version and, and the current version, um, which are just jam packed with great information in terms of uh, various types of arsenals they're producing trousers or blouses or what have you. So if I want to buy something like a, a, a kepi or I'm looking for other kinds of equipment, I usually scope out, see what the horse soldier has as far as original stuff. So I can at least uh, uh, educate myself in terms of what does a good musket look like? What am I looking for as far as markings uh, or canteens or, or all sorts of things? They have personal items. Uh, um, uh, they have uh, m musket tools, all that kind of good stuff. So before I buy anything, uh, I try, although I, I'm pretty well set for gear, believe me, after 20 years, you, you've pretty much reached the max. But um, Every so often, I will I will scan these areas just to see what they're what's, what they're offering, and also does it how close does it come to the, the items that I own as reproductions? Museums are another great place in which to learn about uh, various equipment, particularly uh, for a regiment, say in Connecticut, uh, the 14th Connecticut. Uh, there are two, there there are fantastic repositories of, of artifacts, the Museum of Connecticut History and GAR Halls in Rockville. I mean, there's, there, there's superb places for uh, learning what, what may be 
uh, unique to a particular unit. So, and I'm using the 14th Connecticut because I know them pretty know about that pretty well. Experts: Dean Nelson, Mike Krause, others. Collectors and gun shows. Primary sources uh, such as the 1865 Quartermaster Manual. The slight concern you should have here is that what shows up in print does not necessarily show up on the field. And I'm all, always looking at diaries or other primary resources to, to glean some uh, morsel of information in terms of, you know, you know, maybe somebody's talking about a tent and how they're setting up the tent, or they're talking about uh, oh, we, you know, these leather neck stocks which were issued in 61 are, are, are god awful, so they got rid of them, or Havelocks, or what have you. And uh, so I, I, I caution you that what is, what is it, certainly in print, not necessarily in, in a diary. Diaries typically are reflecting what's actually going on in the field, you know. Uh, then I think that, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just, they're still important, but just, be be careful period photographs are invaluable i love genre paintings i love you know looking at windsor home winslow homer and others again you have to have a critical eye because artists license although with homer there was a great um, painting showing a couple of guys uh, in there uh, sheller has one guy uh, napping and homer even painted his his uh, heel plates on his shoes and you know that is really cool stuff. It's real all, always nice to see corroboration between um, uh, painting, shall we say, or photographs, or what's written with regards to what you're wearing, because that's another invaluable uh, piece of information you can share with visitors. You know, they may say, "Well, gee, you, you, you know, look at your your shoes." I, and shoes, obviously, well, maybe you know this or don't know this, but many shoes that were produced early on were straight shoes, and so you could wear them on your right foot or your left foot. And then, um, you know, there, there are really a lot of uh, pieces of information I have found that really uh, interest visitors, engage visitors, and, and excite them. Um, individuals in your unit, uh, I think, the Kevin O'Byrne type, some of you may know him. He was one of the authors of Compendium, but he was a, a he had he knew a lot of information. So if, if a new if a fresh fish were in a unit, uh, he could guide that person very very easily in order to uh, acquire the right stuff. Uh, before you buy, know what you know what to avoid, and again, a consult consult an experienced fellow member before buying. Avoid the one of article unless unique to your unit, uh, which is seldom. Common and ubiquitous are your guides. Uh, so for example, in with the fifth New Hampshire, uh, when they when they were forming up in New Hampshire, they were issued these Whipple hats. And some of you know about the great Whipple hat story. And there's a picture of a, of a, a soldier wearing a Whipple hat. Very doubtful many of those went south when they uh, were on the uh, on the front. So again, do I spend a lot of money for a really, really good uh, forge cap or do I spend money on a Whipple hat that I might use once in a while for a living history up in New Hampshire? You know, that's that's a question. So you want to kind of avoid that not to say you you totally ignore it because there, these can be very interesting things too to share with uh, particularly in living history settings but you know you just have to be aware of avoiding the the oddball uh, item I, I i i had seen a lot of uh, camp shoes there's a there's an illustration of camp shoes in the in the echoes of glory worn by some guy in the 27th Connecticut. Now, if everyone shows up in camp shoes on formation, guess what? <laughs> Not gonna work. And so, again, you have to be, you have to know know the, the culture and the history of your unit and certainly expectations of us, of the commanders in the NR, you know, what, what, what we want to see uh, in dress parades, et cetera. Poorly made inauthentic items, uh, they usually won't last, they won't wear well. 
and uh, you know uh, aren't really too terrific for your impression. Bear that in mind. Ordering goods with manufacturing wait times, I try to buy off the rack. Uh, however, if you're going to buy uh, shoes, I don't care what you say. The most important thing, reproduction you can buy, would be a pair of shoes because. Uh, obviously they have to look right but let me tell you after the first mile if they don't wear well you're done and uh, so shoes don't don't shortcut the shoe uh, uh, purchase at all I've worked with Missouri boot I've had I've had very good luck with them but again I, I had to wait what eight months for a good pair of boots but you know what I love those things and they I've worn them in campaigns. I've worn them, uh, you know, walking miles and miles and miles in Shenandoah or Gettysburg, and uh, well worth for me the time and the money. But again, you know, these guys are, you know, two or three, four. I don't know how many how many people work for Missouri Boot, and I think they'll be around for a while. But you know, it's here today, gone tomorrow. Pay with cash or check. Try to use credit card. Many of us have been uh, stung before, I'm sure. So early, mid, or late war, what's the diff? Uh, if you, depends on when your unit was mustered in. Acquiring gear, I would aim for early, from early to mid war stuff, uh, like a tent with wood bones would, would be my preference. Um, uh, there are differences. There are definitely differences, as many of you know, particularly scabbards, stit all stitching, two rivets, seven rivet. Um, uh, belts, standing loop versus brass keeper. You know, again, these are, um, I think, details, details that speak volumes, either directly or indirectly to not only your comrades, but also to the public. Uh, so I won't dwell too long on that, but th there are differences with re with the type of equipment. Uh, cap box is a good example, shield front versus f f all leather flap. Um, again, if you're, if you're starting out in the hobby, I would try to do early war, not 61, but maybe 62-ish. I think in the NR, we try to do a lot of uh, impressions in the 62, 64 range. So the equipment that ends up in the, in, in, within those couple of years would be uh, ideal for you to acquire. Vendors. Uh, most units have vendors uh, sources on uh, their sites with commentary. Uh, we have a, the National Regiment has a, a vendor schedule. Um, again, I would consult your local, your regimental um, Kevin O'Byrne type or authenticity committee uh, before you buy anything just for guidance. Um, obviously, caveat emptor, uh, cottage industry shops, be aware. Um, this is a sort of an aside. <clears throat> I, I was at a reenactment where was it Antietam, and a couple of our guys bought some very high end frock or sack coats from CJ Daly, and uh, uh, and as you all know, we're pretty wiped out and tired after the after various battle scenarios, particularly uh, when Mark Adler is in charge. He drives us into into our uh, drives us to death. And um, so these guys are lounging around, took off their, their jackets, and next thing you knew it, they were gone. They were, you know, there's, there's a lot of people around looking for better stuff and they upgrade their own equipment by stealing yours. So just at these mega events, I just warn you that if you have fairly good stuff, keep an eye on it, you, for your stuff as well as your comrade. Um, we have learned, as you all know, a lot of our uh, earlier members have retired from the hobby and they acquired great stuff because when they were gearing up, a lot of fairly good, really good um, vendors were around. And I would say to all of you <clears throat> unit commanders that either through, through 
Facebooks or through other means, I would get in touch with your, your, your retired members and ask them if they're interested in selling their gear. Because nine times out of 10, uh, they're gonna have stuff made by the Cicalas, the Ronemachers, uh, uh, Childs, all those guys. And, and for the most part, they are uber correct, right as rain, and they're worn, they, they're, they're, they're campaign broken in. Uh, I would not uh, suggest that you try to get uh, things like uh, shoes, you really need to buy your own shoes and um, uh, unless you, you come across some guy who has a perfect shoe that is a perfect fit, et cetera. But, uh, you know, many of you know these, these guys, the Paul Smith, Greg Starbucks, Brad Coyne, Rademacher. Owens is still in business, but he's like a one-man shop. He does great um, uh, knapsacks and, and other things. So Kayla, I know what you're all thinking. I can see you biting your tongues out there. Um, uh, but his, some of his stuff is, uh, is really good. And however, I will tell you as, as uh, forcefully and as I can, you buy off the rack only. And uh, uh, he does have a website. He's still in business. I think he's actually... Uh, putting stuff up on eBay or whatever. So it, it, it's available right then and there. Uh, and I would take a look at his website once in a while. Uh, he, he does have some pretty good stuff. Childs, I'm not sure where he is. He had really good blankets. Hank Burgess, I'm no longer with us, but fantastic leathers. Cavalry guys, he was a cavalry. He, he, he was the, the go-to cavalry leather guy. Um, Missouri Boot, I talked about others, Daily Limbull. How many, I'm sure a lot of you folks know about Lynn, know Lynn. Bender is out of business, but he did great soft hats, another gear. Dirty Billy's still around. I, I like his stuff, but again, know what you're buying. As far as muskets go, uh, that's a mixed bag. I would, there are a lot of units, uh, a lot of guys who have muskets that they may want to sell. The, as far as defarbing, um, there are a number of uh, uh, firms that will do this. Uh, again, if you look at the original musket, uh, say in Echoes, the stampings on those muskets come pretty close to the stampings on Zimmerman's defarb muskets. However, again, you know, there's a risk here because uh, He's a one or two man shop. Uh, Zimmerman himself is ancient now. I think it's his either his relatives or someone's taking over, but uh, I would be very, very careful about that. And even with primo vendors, what we otherwise known as stitch Nazis, some of you've heard this term, I've had to correct some of their stuff because they weren't faithful to the original. And I always ask the guys, so what are you copying? If you're, if you're, if I get, get this frock coat from you, or if I get this uh, cartridge box from you, what are you copying? And if they can tell you that and show you and share with you what they're copying, I have, I like that information. I want to know that information. And, uh, in fact, for the 14th Connecticut, Paul, uh, there was a, a guy in our unit years and years ago. He had a, uh, an original cartridge box and, and scabbard. And Sakala actually copied that cartridge box and that, that scabbard, which I now own. And I would like to talk to you about getting it back into the 14th Connecticut. Um, so original equipment that's come up once in a while, I know it's up on our website, uh, don't use it. Uh, particularly, and in, our, in the old days, you know, 20, 30 years ago, and you probably know some of these people who did this, original guys were wearing original trousers, original blouses, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And particularly with textiles, they are the most vulnerable to uh, damage. Uh, I, I think if you own any of this stuff, I would, Keep it at home in acid-free papers, acid-free boxes. You know, look at it. I use. I have some original stuff that I use when I'm copying something. 
for my kit. It's always great to have it. A friend of mine lent me his original overcoat when I was putting my overcoat together using a Charlie Childs pattern. And I discovered that even though Childs used the same coat that he, he cut a corner in terms of a few things. So having the original was amazing. I mean, just to see it and trying to, um, you know, work with it. Um, uh, I've, because I inspect uh, muskets often during reenactments, I come across many originals. And I don't disagree. Uh, they are uh, very well balanced. In fact, um, uh, Warren, my Whitneyville, like your Whitneyville, it's beautifully balanced, it's light, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, I, I, I'm not convinced that the breaches are safe. I, I think they could be, they could uh, blow. Uh, they, are, they are lighter. Also, anyone using an original, it totally devalues the, the, the weapon. Although, again, there's back and forth discussion on this, and I, I'm not, I'm not going to really get in the middle of it, frankly. I prefer guys in the ranks using reproduction uh, weapons for many, many reasons, um, safety being first and foremost. Now, if you have original stuff, which we all do, and you're in a living history and you feel it's, the weather's perfect and you, are, you feel there's a great amounts of security, and we've done this with the 5th New Hampshire, we had a guy who brought his stuff and put it on display and, you know, the, the visitors love it. Uh, so um, I, I don't discourage it, uh, but I, you know, artifacts are artifacts and, in fact, even when I'm handling my stuff, I, I use uh, white gloves because I don't want the oils in my hands to uh, deteriorate the, um, the artifact. So bottom line here, buy a really good reproduction. Uh, and if you can sort of line it up with an original, even better uh, for your own knowledge, but also for uh, educational purposes uh, with public and also again with your comrades. So that's all I have to share with you. Um, uh, if there are any questions or comments, I certainly welcome them. Okay, thank you very, very much, Paul. Are there any questions? I was just going to let everybody know, Paul obviously mentioned it, but I did put an equipment list on the, uh, the new NR website, so yep. and I did remove Bender from the list, if that's who you're referring to. Uh, right. what, I would, what I would suggest, if it's okay with any of you, particularly uh, the Colonel or whomever, um, it, I think it'd be kind of fun to put together an authenticity committee for the NR, and so what would they do? I think like at, at every NCO school, we take a chapter out of the compendium and talk about trousers or talk about cartridge boxes or talk about canteens just to, again, in a, in a very broad brush uh, way, uh, inform uh, our ranks what's going on and, and what to look for and, and uh, you know, how to appreciate their gear already. So, Yeah, so um, absolutely. Uh, just to add to that, um, we have done on, on a number of, of school occasions, have gone through that with canteens. I think Chris said lack yeah, of a good we job have. on that. So we, we've had done a number of those things and I think it's a great idea. Um, and just so you know, uh, tomorrow at nine o'clock, uh, um, Mike Krause is gonna jump, is gonna you know, do a, a, a piece on the 100th Pennsylvania um, and talk about their uniforms, their trends and all the equipment they were issued. So through photographic history, so, uh, that's something I think that uh, if you're interested in, definitely be on that one tomorrow. Yeah, definitely. Okay, any other questions? Okay, well, thank you very, very much, Paul. Um, always informative. We love when, when you get to, to join us and, 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 and tell us about these kind of things. And I think you're right. I think we do need to be a little bit uh, you know, more aggressive in making sure that we get that, uh, those lists together, certainly, um, but also... Uh, start to do a little bit more uh, of awareness training uh, through our schools. And I think that we can, we can definitely do that. So I appreciate you. Thank you very much.